Oh, God bless you, Pastor Bobby. Well, let's get excited in the Lord's yeah. house. Amen. We have a lot to praise the Lord about. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And how appropriate that song is. So many miracles take place every day, all around us, in our lives. Come on. We have a lot to praise the Lord about. He's worthy of all praise, all glory. Have your way in this place, Abba. Please forgive us. Please cleanse us from all unrighteousness so that we can give you a praise this morning with a clean heart. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Things are getting real, Jesus take the wheel, only way I'm getting to the other side. Things are getting dark, life's a little hard, blinded but I'm trying not to lose sight. I, I don't got this, I know you got, got this, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'll believe it before, before I see it. it, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you're gonna see me through it, if anybody can, you can do it. Gotta know in the trial, the pain, fire, and rain, you're gonna see Come on. me through it. You're gonna see me through it If anybody can, you can do it And whenever my heart runs away You save the day, you're gonna see me through it when the sky falls, who am I gonna call? The one who put it up there in the first place. Full scale attack, devil on my back, better face with my big go put on my game face. I don't got this, I know you got this, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. And I'll, I'll believe it before I see it, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you're gonna see me through it. If anybody can, you can do it. Gotta know in the trial, game, fire, and rain, you're gonna see me through it. You're gonna see me through it. If anybody can, you can do it. And whenever my hope runs away, you say the day you're gonna see me through it. Our God is bigger than all of our problems. The only one who knows how to solve them. So if you're sitting in the back rock bottom, praising the air, you got them. Our God is bigger than all of our problems. The only one who knows how to solve them. So if you're sitting in the back rock bottom, praising the air, I know you're gonna see me through it. If anybody can, you can do it. Gotta know the trial, pain, fire, and rain. You're gonna see me through it. You're gonna see me through it. If anybody can, you can do it. And whenever my hope runs away, you save the day. You're gonna see me through it. Our God is bigger than all our problems. The only one who knows how to solve them. So if you're sitting in the back, my bottom, raise in the air if you got them. Our God is bigger than all of our problems. The only one who knows how to solve them. So if you're sitting in the back, my bottom, raise in the air. I know you're gonna see me through it. If anybody can, you can do it. Gotta know in the trial, pain, fire, rain. You're gonna see me through it. You're gonna see me through it. If anybody can, you can do it. Our God, it. come on. Our God is bigger than all our problems. The only one who knows how to solve them. Is if you're sitting in the back rock bottom, prayers in the air if you got them. Our God is bigger than all our problems. The only one who knows how to solve them. Is if you're sitting in the back rock bottom, prayers in the air. I know you're gonna see me through it. If anybody can, you can do it. Gotta know in the trials, pain, fire, and rain, you're gonna see me through it. You're gonna see me through it. If anybody can, you can do it. And whenever my hope runs away, you say the day, you're gonna see me through it. Yeah, 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 I know you're gonna see me through it. <gasps> Hallelujah! 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 Thank you, Jesus! Yes, Amen. The Lord always saves the day. Sometimes the days, sometimes days are really hard, but we can trust him knowing that he's going to make, everything is going to be okay. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 One thing we need to remember is that all things work together for the good to them that love God. So even though it seems like it's so junk and such a bad day, how could anything turn out better? But we know. All things work together for the good to them that love God. So it's going to work out for our good. Amen? Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. I know a lot of us can testify to that. Hallelujah. 
We're thankful to be in the Lord's house. There's not a better place to be than in the house of the Lord. Come on. Doesn't matter what the devil says. Doesn't matter what people say. There's not a better place to be than in the house of the Lord. Worshiping God. Honoring him. Giving him glory for the breath that you breathe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The breath in your lungs come it comes from him praise God we didn't have to get up and pray to get breath some of us wouldn't be getting up but we just breathe and we just breathe because he breathes life into us hallelujah we're thankful in the house this morning amen thank you Lord hallelujah let's worship Hallelujah.
spoke the words, let there be light, and it was whole. And in the same breath, the stars fell in line, with one voice creation cries, you do all things well. Be praised, 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 be praised
glorified, be honored in this house and all of your houses throughout this world, Lord. We love you. We honor you. Have your way in this place. Thank you, Jesus, again and again for the precious blood that you shed on Calvary for each and every one of us. We thank you, Lord. Because of you, we have life. Because of you, we have abundant life. Thank you for every family represented in this house today. Thank you, Lord, for our family online. Thank you, Lord, for every leader, for every laborer in this church and ministry. Thank you for our church family. Thank you for the associate pastors and their families. Hallelujah. Thank you for the worship pastor, the youth pastor, and their families. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the apostle of the house and for his family. Hallelujah. Thank you for the missionary in the house and for his family. Thank you for the prophetess in the house and for her family. Thank you, Lord for all that you are doing in the lives of your children. We continuously see the goodness of God all around us. We pray especially, Lord, for those who are going through such uh, calamity and tragedy throughout this world, Lord. We pray that you please help them to draw near to you so that you can draw near to them. We pray especially, Lord, for those who have lost loved ones that you would comfort them, that you would blanket them with your peace, Lord. We pray for our nation, for our government. We pray for every soldier at war, at home, our veterans, their families. And we thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day and all that it holds. Thank you, Lord, that as we go throughout our day today, we will remember that we are so blessed because you have blessed us. Help us to remember that you are, are our source. Have your way in this place, Spirit of the living God. Thank you, Lord, for your servant, for the word that is going out that never returns void. Help us to understand, help us to receive it, that it be rooted in our hearts, Lord God. We thank you for the days ahead are so blessed because we are your children. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. morning. It's good to be alive, huh? Sometimes we got so much to grumble about, but if we just think about, like the song says, so many miracles, so many blessings, so many things that God has for us, so many things He's preparing for us. So today, that's why Bob, Pastor Bobby prayed that there would be an understanding, because this is a direct prophetic word. This is a word that's going to take us into 2023. This is a word that will not be able to share at one time there's a two-part message that God gave me and he made sure that I didn't run the two together because he said this one will help to understand the second one if you don't understand what's coming then your preparation is not going to be ready so it's a powerful word it's a powerful word about a season a different season like we've never seen before a season that was upon the earth before thousands of years ago that's reenacting to come to pass today it's something that is moving that we're not familiar with because we haven't seen it or experienced it. We just read about it. And it's in the Word. So, so many times I want you to buckle up because it doesn't matter how old you are, what you're going through, your deficiencies, the thing you've struggled with. God wants you to know that it's a season that He's created. But you have to tap into it. You have to live this season. Surplus is a big word. Defined, it's different than what you might think not only in excess of or abundance but let me share what the definition in depth is a surplus is requirements met demands established I'm gonna say it one more time requirements are met and demands are established that's the excess of abundance because there's surplus throughout the Bible if you read it in the Greek and the Hebrew you'll find that the word abundance abundantly means surplus it means beyond that which is needed and I know many experience that in life and in the Bible it shows you thank you so much God bless you you got to understand God is a God the only God that loves everybody even when we're not saved he loved us his love is equal beyond all realms of understanding 
His forgiveness is equal beyond all realms of understanding. But you can only receive what you do, what you put, what you demonstrate. You know how we raise our children to say thank you? They go through stages where they don't really want to say thank you. It's like they're being told to say thank you. It's like, thank you, thank you. So that's okay. But as we get older, God holds us accountable for that word, which means thank you is not a requirement. Thank you is an issue of a grateful heart, which generates favor, which brings forth the blessings of God. I'm trying to help you with something here, because favor is not something you earn or I earn. It's something that's given through gratitude, through a heart of gratitude, not just saying thank you or, oh, I really appreciate it, but it's lip service. It's stuff we've been taught. Our heart has to be in thanksgiving toward God. I'm trying to help you here, because I'll tell you what, it generates favor. Generating favor is about appreciation. That's, that's really what it is. You know that if you have uh, uh, appreciation for your parents when you're growing up, you get a lot of blessings. Uh, Pastor Bobby will say it loud. But let me tell you something. There's a time in life with your relationship with God where you come out of blessings and you walk right into benefits. What do you think about that before I go read the Word? Because you see, blessings happen every day. But it says... Bless the Lord, O my soul, all that is with me, and forget not all his benefits. benefits. Not blessings. Blessings are good. I like benefits better. You know when you work for a company, if somebody gives you a one-day blessing, it's nice, but it doesn't last too long. I like the benefits. Yeah, your medical, dental, right? All of the benefits, right? Your vacation pay. They even give you sick leave. Some people lie, but they shouldn't, but they take the sick leave and, and you know, whatever the case may be. I know that's true. Come on. Don't make like you didn't do it when before you knew Jesus. Hopefully you don't do it now. But, you know, before you knew Jesus, okay, well, there's a difference. But I want to encourage you today. This word is for everybody. It's a word from, that really I'm encouraged by because it's from 2022 to 2023. And it may extend greater. It's God's direction. This is a season. I'm going to show you in the Word. Some seasons go on for years. Years. So that tells me with this Word that what's coming in is greater than any abundance. I, we couldn't even find I had Pastor Lulu. Can you find a barn that's overflowing? We saw, I saw so many pictures of barns with no overflowing. Just barns. You know, nothing coming out of the windows or the doors. I'm like, nah, that ain't going to work. So I didn't want any machines. So what you see here is an overabundance of grain. But let me explain this picture. This picture is out of Australia. This picture is in 2021 into 2022 of an overabundance of surplus that they've never seen before. Their percentage into 75% more than they've ever seen in grain and barley harvest. So I'm like, whoa, that's kind of intense, you know. So that, that kind of matched up. And they had some other pictures. But we know that we're not storing up grain or barley, amen, because I don't have the facility to do that. But you know that's food, right? Just if you just keep that perspective, that's all. So it's provisions. Keep that perspective. Provisions can be vast and go on. So I just wanted to kind of break in that and give a definition. I'm going to say it again. And I'll share it in the writing so that it'll confirm. This is a definition by Dictionary, Webster's, and Miriam, and different ones that'll come. But the main, main definition is in excess of. It'll start with that. Then it shares requirements met and demands established. You're going to see in the Word what that means. In other words, requirements are things that are needed, but once it's established, the demands have been met already. So God has already supplied that. Demands are met, but the requirements have to be established first. The thank you comes in between everything by a grateful heart. A grateful heart. A grateful heart. I want you to get something today. I pray I could just give you all grateful hearts. But I can't. I am thankful. I am grateful. I've seen what God did throughout our, our lives. But during this pandemic, He advanced us. He grew us. When we were shut down, He put two new air conditioners on the roof. And I'm not going to go into detail on how much that cost. But we're talking mega thousands. And He supplied it cash. I'm bragging on Him. I'm not going to go into detail. But I'm telling you. A new sound system came in. And I'm like, I'm, I'm filming by myself with Pastor Olulu behind the camera going, wow, air conditioning's working. Nobody's here, but, you know, I'm here. And we're just like, <laughs> it's just weird. 
But we're thanking the Lord because His provisions, requirements were met. Demands were established. I want you to get this because He's about to change your life to have a different perspective of what's coming for your life. As well as any believer, any born again believer that wants to absorb this. That's why God gave the word that in Proverbs, all labor profits. So I'm not talking about your labor, your jobs. I'm talking about provisions beyond your understanding. I'm talking about provisions that you've got to be tapped into God to be able to tap it out, to have the excess to help others. This is a big key that people forget. God don't bless us for us. God blesses us so we become a conduit till we keep on moving. This is what this ministry does with 22 outreaches. It continually to souls and give Malama pregnancy. It gives feed the children, feed the poor. We feed my sheep. We do every possible feeding that possibly can because that's the surplus of supplies that people, no parent should watch their child go without food on the table. No parent should watch a child go into hunger. No parent should do that. So we start at home. You don't take care of your, if you can't take care of your own yard, go, don't go a lot more of your neighbors. If, you're, if yours is making all these different kinds of uh, areas where we're not looking at the fullness of it, you know, you look over your neighbor's yard, wow, man, they need, they need to weed whack that yard. And yours is like growing trees on the fence, you know. So we got to make sure we take care of what we take care of. So we're going to talk about the God of surplus. Genesis 41, 48 is where we're going to start. Can we have the word up, please? Thank you, Lord. God is good. Amen. We all know about this. This is the uh, International Standard Version, which is giving us the word surplus for the abundance. Okay, let's read together. Joseph collected the surplus food throughout the land of Egypt, storing food in cities. That is, he gathered the food from fields that surrounded every city and stored it there. Father, this is a word above a word. This is a time of understanding. So we receive that he not only stored a surplus and stored it in the cities, but he gathered it from the fields around. Every city had surplus and put it into the city there and stored it up. Father, we thank you for your word in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I get excited. You know why? I not only believe the word, I walk in that every day going, Lord, teach me, show me, help me, Lord. Because there's great things that are about to happen. And we have to understand that. So we understand that's a time where there was great things that were happening in Egypt, right? The famine was about to hit the land. Pharaoh got the dream, right? But Joseph got the understanding. You see, you can have dreams, but unless you got an anointed person to give you understanding, you may miss interpret that dream or misinterpret that word of understanding so you may not be able to apply it properly so God makes sure all the evidence is there all the gifts are active Joseph was in prison you see you got to understand nobody wants to go to prison betrayed by his own family okay Joseph was a little bragger but betrayed by his own family and then he goes into the pit and we know the story he goes into the prison and goes falsely accused of raping uh, Potiphar's wife and um when you look at the full picture, God placed him where he should be. He didn't do any of those crimes. But guess what? He didn't do it like a lot of us would. Complain. Grumble. It shows dissatisfaction. You know what? He became the jailer's jailer. He became the guy that walks around, don't have to stay in the cell. Want to read a book? Want some food? Want something? He became the assistant. Wherever he was, he prospered because God was with him. But grumbling defeats the purpose of the anointing. It doesn't say, by the grumbling, Jesus breaks the yoke. It says, by the anointing, Jesus breaks the yoke. And we have to understand that. So Joseph is in a time where he has the understanding of the vision, of the dream, and he begins to save. For how long? A season. Beyond any season known on earth. There was no season like that. Seven years of abundance, overflow, excess. Nobody could imagine. Well, I got news for you. We're in a season right now. It's about to begin in the process of its folding out. And we have to be understanding of it, knowing of it, not just going, oh, well, that's for them. Well, then you can sit back and stay where you are. See, one thing I've learned from God is that I can't expect people to do or think the way I think, but I can't let them stop me from doing what God's telling me to do because I'm going to walk in that blessing. I'm going to walk in that power. And all of you know, I mean, I already received so much from God in these last two years. It's crazy. Received an inheritance from a dad that I never knew. In fact, we never knew he had anybody. Let's say enough, I didn't know him. 
my half sister called me and said, well, my sister, Roxanne called said, I don't think dad got any money. And I never met him before. He's from Chicago. But the story is two months before we flew over there, he died. I was supposed to meet with him. Never met my dad before. But God is my father. And when I admitted that, and God didn't want me to meet him. I know this. Because God could have saved him another few weeks or a few months. So God is my father. I accept that fully. Driving truck, I accepted that. So what I'm saying is that I received an inheritance. I met his wife of 30 years, which is a number of his wives, but this was for 30 years he had this wife. I met her once at a reunion they had. She remembered and put me on her living trust. Once. I was in my dad's will, which I didn't know, and received a substantial blessing. In five different, they called it the matrix because they had to break it down into intervals. And this was God that did this, just this last year. Well, I thought it was over because we signed all the releasements. And then the lawyer gets in touch and says, sign another document because there's still money there. Yeah. I'm not bragging. I'm telling you what God, you got to see. I'm no different than you. The only difference is how you serve God. How you believe in Him. How you trust Him. I can't give you that. I can help you. I want to help you. I'm here to encourage you. The IRS owed us money. They didn't want to give us because we gave. They said we gave too much money. They lie all the time. But, you know, there's never you can give God too much. But so they said, okay, you can only have this much. They gave me, listen, they gave me 10% basically of what I was supposed to get. So I went to my tax man. He fixed it all up. He became part of attorney for me to talk to them, yada, yada, yada. They sent me a letter about a week ago, not more. We need 60 more days to figure out what we want to do with uh, whatever money we owe you. Well, I received it in my account day before yesterday. Hallelujah. I, don't, I can't even, I, well, I, I, checked, I checked the bank daily. I went, okay, that ain't right. Maybe I better pull the money out. Because, you know, if somebody makes a deposit, you want to take it out real quick, right? You never know, you know. If you didn't make that deposit, go get it. Anyways, <laughs> um, <laughs> so I listened. I went, oh, my, wait a minute. I did the math, and I went, that's what they owe me. So even though they said 60 days, within a few days after the letter arrived, I had the deposit in. I'm not bragging. I'm trying to tell you something. It's a season for everybody. But your relationship with God really matters right now. The depth of your heart, your gratitude. It's not about me and you. It's about you and God. See, it's easy if I'm the poster child and you want to get mad at me and tell he's bragging about his blessings. No, I'm trying to tell you it's already happening. When God says he's going to transfer the wealth of the wicked, my my biological dad was not a Christian born again, per se. Yeah, he believed in God, I believe. I don't know him, so I cannot say. But I still reaped of that benefit. Amen. Totally unawares. I was, I, yeah, we were shocked. I was like, what? What? No, nah, what? <laughs> Even as a Christian, I'm going, what? Because I did not see that coming. Because that was a part, was pa what Reverend Ty was sharing. There's an inheritance happening. That inheritance is within the season of this power of surplus. And you got to understand that. During the pandemic, I learned this because, I mean, got to admit, my mind was going, oh, boy, how are we going to do this? You know, how are we going to, how are we going to not survive, but how are we going to take care of business? And God gave us the word, right, to a destroyer that goes through in World War II, right? They traveled through the waters and had a bad hurricane, big radius. They're right in the middle of the eye of the hurricane. And that's what the word came from the captain to the lieutenant. When he said, how fast is the storm moving? you got to see this. How fast is things moving? And, the cap and he told the captain, well, you know, about three point whatever, whatever miles it was, 3.2 miles, whatever it was. And the captain says, adjust speed to that. So they're moving with the storm. They're staying in the eye. No problems. All around them is mega 200-mile winds. So he comes back about an hour or so later. He goes, are we going to outrun the storm? captain goes no we're gonna outlast it see storms die they come and go god is forever Amen. he will see us through, like the song he'll see us through that storm he'll be with us he'll help us through it but sometimes we got to go through it but we're so anxious either we go to the left to the right instead of just staying right in the middle right in the calm with god amen, amen. so we're at a time of joseph it's a time of great famine i want to give you a word that in revelation it'll tell you that the time of tribulation is seven years I'm not prophesying how many years we got to wait. I'm telling you, seven years. Joseph had seven years of plenty, seven years of not plenty. So I believe firmly that in this season, we have an opportunity, an open door from God we never had before upon the earth until that time. I believe that. 
So let me get through, uh, continue to go through and share. So again, surplus, the definition word for word. The excess, more than what is needed, the amount remaining after requirements have been met, the excess of supply over demand, abundance. That's the definition. Abundance is the word for surplus. In 41, not 49, which is still about Joseph, Joseph stored up, listen to this, so much grain, like the sand of the seashore, seashore, it is, you see those, those words together do not work for me. See, sure. I have to say them separately. <laughs> in so much abundance, in so much surplus, that he stopped keeping records because it was proving to be impossible to measure the amount of surplus that he was gathering. So if there's a time we can come in that we can't even count the blessings. Like one, two, three, four miracles. I can't count them. Like the song. Pastor Bobby picked that song. I didn't know what it was. But as I was listening to it, I'm going, wow. That just lines up with the word. Because we can't count all the blessings, you know, all the things we've been through in life. All the healing, all the times he helped our parents, us, you know. Thankful. I mean, look at what Sister Pam went through so much. Pastor Al went through so much. I tripped out on Pastor Al. He serves 30 years in the military, five deployments, comes back and has a quadruple bypass. Ha! Look at him, like, like iron. <laughs> I remember telling the nurse at Kaiser, he served five, he served five tours. He's a 30-year vet, a lieutenant colonel. You take good care of him. We're definitely going to take good care of him. Take care of him. I told him right outside the room, two nurses. That was his surgical nurses. Just Al and I were talking for a minute, letting him do some things. But I thought, wow, you like served five tours. 30 years in the military. You come back in. But then I thought, that must have been a stressful time. 30 years. Yeah. But look at it. It's like iron. Like I said, it's like iron. He is. And he's helped me excessively and extremely to become a better person knowing and being with, around him for the times that we talk. Might not always agree with everything. Sometimes we bump heads. Amen. Are you hearing me? All of us. It's about growth. It's about working together as a team. That's why it's called the Lord's team, not my team. See, people mistake this house. It's God's house. It's not my house. I just have responsibilities in the house. It's God's house. The word of truth, James 1.18. It's the word of God. Of His first fruit. It's His house. Two times in all these years of service to God, He had to remind me it's His house. Because sometimes I get mad at people. Don't make like you don't get mad at me. I get mad too. I just don't air it as well as you guys do. I take it to the room and go, what's happening? And he'll tell me, it's not your church, it's mine. Oh, yes. Just remember it again. Yes. Sometimes it happens. I mean, I don't know. I'm just honest. I'm just sharing. It happens, you know. You know. Sometimes you just go, why don't they just get it? It's my church, not yours. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember. God is the one that helps us all through this. But it doesn't mean that I don't have feelings or emotion and I lose it every now and then inside my own brain. Amen? You have to understand, I am not an android. I serve superhuman Jesus. You know, <laughs> but I don't make no excuses for myself. But I'm human. But I seek the anointing greater and greater every day, which means closer and closer, more abundant. You might say, I have enough. I never get enough of His presence. I never get enough of His anointing. And with the growth of anointing grows the power of your accomplishing your purpose on this earth. He has an anointing for every... He's got plenty. Plenty of anointing. So anyways, that is the, um, the power. I wanted to encourage that Joseph stored up so much grain that... I mean, I don't know about you, but when you look at your bank account, you got so much you cannot put any more inside. Just saying. I don't, so praise the Lord. But I mean... This is how much grain, this is how much provisions he collected that he told the guy, stop counting already. It's like you don't even use a checkbook. Just write the check, it's in there. Yeah. I'd love to do that. <laughs> That'd be great, right? You know? I'd love to do that. And we're heading there. I'm serious. This is a time, a season we've never seen. God told me only, only once before have I done such a season like this. So I'm believing it's going to last more than a day or a couple of times. But let's get to the Word and keep on going. God is showing us that there is now a season of plenty before 
the rapture even takes place or the catching away in First Corinthians 15 and uh, 50 through 58 and 59 or whatever it is. And the seven years of plenty is extended in a season. So I'm not saying and giving dates. I'm telling you this is one of the longest seasons we're ever going to see. And I believe there will be confirmation everywhere. I'm not the only kid on the block if he hasn't said it already. Yes, seen it. Yeah, yeah. And when I was looking up this, just so I was looking for a picture, working with Pastor Olu, because he's looking for a, a picture so we can demonstrate what we're talking about. And this is the one, I kept on looking at this. And when I read it, I didn't just look at the pair. I went, this is a picture of Australia in its most excessive time. But isn't it funny, just a thought, that the government's not sharing that with us? Talking about Russia, it's their fault we have gas prices. Hmm. If you believe that, I got some land on the moon I want to sell you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just saying just saying so again I want to also help you that preparation and preparing is part of this Joseph prepared so it's part of a cycle that begins in a season they have to prepare listen to God hear him out our part in the season is preparation hearing God and just applying it might be a small thing to do but do it do this do this even if it doesn't make sense God's not trying to make sense he's building faith he's building trust in him Nothing makes sense sometimes. I don't know about you, but sometimes I'm like, this don't make any sense at all. But I'm going to do it because that's what God wants. God is not sensible. He's remarkable. There's just a difference there, you know. First, again, meeting the requirements. Second, establishing the demand. Third, distribution of the supply. Which means he never gives. Joseph didn't store up for seven years just for him, himself, and his family. Or for Pharaoh. But he made Pharaoh the richest king in all the land. And is exchanging with the surplus. Don't think that the government don't know that either. This is a word you need to hear. The government knows this. They're storing up. Because if they control the food, who do they control? The people. I'm not a conspirator. I'm just giving you truth. It's ba I'm not. That's like too busy for me. My brain don't work that way. Because you can sit down and go, oh no, we're going to happen this, we're going to happen this, we're going to happen this. No. I voice my belief. I do what I believe and hear the Word of God. I operate by the Word of God. I even vote by the Word of God. I vote by the Word of God. So it, it, when, I first, when I first started voting many years ago, it wasn't about uh, either side. It was about who do you want, God? I don't care if it's an independent. I don't care if it's this. Who do you want, God? And I'm a conservative, so I vote on the Republican Party, and I can say that. And that's just what I choose. You choose what you choose. But I want to be clear. You know, if God told me, I want you to vote for this Democrat, I'd be like, what? <laughs> okay. Okay. You know, because that, that's just not what I, I would feel, you know. Uh, why? Because I'm a conservative, meaning that I... I children i was pro-life before i was a christian i've been pro-life since i was like 14 years old and i stand firm on pro-life i'm not saying about medical issues or nothing like that i'm talking about inconvenience you kill a baby that's murder i want to share the word of god very clear that murder is the taking the life of an innocent person i got a question for y'all is a baby innocent yeah. that's murder i don't care what anybody says hear it out there you can give it to the government that's murder you can give it to Planned Parenthood that's murder I don't care what you say I'm not talking about medical issues or if you're hurting or there's some kind of problem I'm talking about you want to have sex but you don't want to have babies so you kill the baby to make it convenient for you financially and it's not time yet I want to tell you right now that's murder done okay let's go back to the message because that was like a trail I went off on the side over there just a little bit so now we come to another time where there was a daily event that took place which was big. It was a miracle, like the song in Matthew 14, 17 through 21. Of course, in verse 17, it says there were five uh, loaves of bread and two fish, right? I'm just going to PowerPoint it, but these are the verses. In 18, Jesus said, bring them to me, gather the surplus. Well, no, it's not surplus. Yes, it is, because they had nothing. So what he brought in was the supply, the surplus, which was not a big surplus, but it was a surplus. But the disciples, like us, well, who got some enough money? How are we going to feed these 5,000 people? Because that's the next word. They were saying that. Where are we going to get the money? And even if we had the money, they said, we couldn't get enough food for all of them. And Jesus said, I didn't ask you for money. I said, bring, oh, you're not hearing me. Bring what you got. 
bring the surplus. Bring what that little boy got that was probably his lunch and a few others. Verse 19, he's already got it. Gathered the surplus. Everything's there. Told the people, sit down. A requirement had to be met. Jesus wanted them calmly sitting. Sit down. Requirement. And he said it on the grass. I love the scriptures. He didn't say sit on the wall. Go sit behind the stone so nobody can see you. Sit on the grass. Took the supply, gave thanks. That's not a requirement. It's a grateful heart. As he gave thanks, giving thanks is not required, but generates favor. And Jesus had favor with God and man continually because he had a grateful heart. He was full of thanksgiving. God will not force us to say thank you. Parents do that, but only in the youth group. We do. That's how I learned to say thank you. I thank Pastor Bobby for washing clothes. And I don't know how I don't know how three people can make that much clothes dirty. But the bed's pretty full downstairs when she's folding always. She's like like mechanics down there, you know. And I'm like, didn't we just wash like three days ago? Oh my gosh. But I and I just like ignore it, you know, we don't want to say anything because we're probably dirty more clothes than anybody else, right? <laughs> but I say thank you, even though she, Bobby does it anyway. I say thank you when Bobby prepares dinner. Benaya does it too. I say thank you when I have the dinner. I say thank you for the other things that are done in my life. Because that's how I participate, apply a grateful heart. If I can't be grateful to those I can see, how can I say that I'm grateful to the God that I cannot see? If I say that I love God but I don't love people then that would be false First John chapter 4 I've got to apply that in every area of my life I didn't say I like you <laughs> I don't like most of you well maybe the ones I know no just kidding <laughs> I'm just saying it's not required for me to like you it's, 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 it's needful that I love you because God loves everybody so love, if I love you, if you do something wrong or talk bad about me, I'm not going to let that hinder my connection with you because that helps me. Did I grow from that? Yeah, because we went through a whole lot of stuff like that. And it's not good to be that way, but you, the love is unconditional, no borders. So even if you're mad or you're angry at somebody, you say something, okay, it's not nice, you know, we've got to go through process, but we don't stop loving them. You don't have to like what they did. That's what I mean. I might not like you at that time, or you might not like me at that time. But if we love each other, we'll continue in the power of God through Jesus Christ. We'll continue. We'll just keep walking. In the season, Joseph was preparing. And we know the story about him and his brothers, but I'm not going to even go there. God will not force us to be grateful, but our grateful heart generates the application of what happens. Thank you. Broke it. Boom. Miracle took place. Thank you. Broke it. Miracle took place. But he had to break that bread. He did it when he did communion with the disciples. Gave thanks, broke the bread. So breaking of bread is come. I don't know about you, but if you don't pray for your food at your table, uh, change it. Change it. You should say thank you. But don't take food off of other people's plate or nothing. Just say thank you. you know? Never break the egg. Got more than me, you know. Say thank you. Jesus broke those loaves, gave them to his disciples. They gave it. Look how the power of the miracle worked. Jesus gave it, they gave it, it continued. They ate and were satisfied, it says in verse 20. The disciples gathered 12 baskets, we all know that, that were left over. Now, I don't want you to sit there and go, I know that word already. I already read that plenty of times. Just shut up and listen. It's part of the program today. The word shut up is in the Bible. They were satisfied, the disciples gathered 12 baskets, the leftover, that surplus. All that ate were 5,000 men besides women and children. So there was way beyond that. The 12 baskets was a surplus. A miracle. It was a one day overflow of power. One day. This I'm talking about a season. I'm talking about a season of overflow. Not a one day thing. Not a one day. Yes, there'll be, there'll be, there'll be miracles that happen like that. But one day. I got word for all these rich people, these movie stars, that highest paid in Hollywood. I come from Hawaii only when it's convenient. I got news for you. Start feeding the poor and start breaking poverty. Start using your money to glorify God in a way that you can't think of only yourself and get all the weight rooms you need and the stories in your house and everything that you need in the beautiful house. That's okay, but you got plenty extra. You got surplus. I was looking at the camera because I hope somebody hears and gets mad and contact me. Like the rock, rock.
highest paid male actor in Hollywood, Dwayne Thompson. That's a, that's a powerful thing. Dom Thompson is his last name, right? Johnson. Johnson. Look, I changed his name. Sorry. <laughs> Didn't mean to change your name. <laughs> Maybe there's another guy out there. I don't know. I'm not sure. But what I'm saying is there's a lot of movie stars that are, they're, they're, um, they have a good Samaritan attitude, you know. They're, they're, they're helping, you know, whales and dogs and fishies and stuff. But how about some people? Homeless. Our vets. I mean, you know, we do what we can. But if everybody did what they could above, the surplus would flow and God would move in that. I know the poor will always be among us. Sometimes it's a choice. Sometimes it's not. But there was an overflow. I'm going to go right in the next in 1 Samuel in 30. 1 Samuel in 30 is the time of David. This is in the Old Testament. And David uh, went, went to go to a battle that he shouldn't have been at. But while he was gone, uh, the Amalekites raided his, his tribe there, his, his little city and uh, his area, and took the wives of all the men and the children, and they took them all together and took it away, and they took all their spoil with them. So David came back. He was pretty mad. He got upset. And David was a warrior. If you don't know, he had a hot temper. But this time it was meant to be, but it also demonstrated that he shouldn't have been in that battle. He wanted to fight for the man that would let him, the king that would let him fight in that battle. The Philistines saw him, the actual story goes, and they saw him across the valley and went, wait, wait, isn't that David? Uh, Saul killed thousands, he killed ten thousands, and he's going to fight against Saul in the battlefield in this valley with us against him? And the king went, yeah, he's been good to me. He goes, no, in the midst of the battle, this guy's going to turn on you. He's going to turn on you because he's going to see King Saul. He's going to know his covenant with God. And he's going to say, oh, no, this ain't going to go down. And Saul had to die that day for his disobedience. I just want to give you a little history on that. But he comes back. Malachites take everything. He goes back. But before he goes anywhere, I mean, you'd be devastated, right? Your children are gone. Your wife is gone. The wives are all gone. Your livestock is gone. And then they burn everything like Vikings. There's nothing left. So he's got nothing left from where he came from. But he did the right thing. He took a knee. And Abiathar came and got him his covering, his ephah. And he said, Lord, shall I go? And shall I overtake them? And the Lord said, go. You shall overtake them. But I see a picture because he didn't ask. And I see David getting up and getting ready. And God said, and you will recover it all. He says it in the word in the King James. A lot of other Bibles lack, or uh, translations lack saying that. They don't say you'll recover it all. So in that process, David goes, right? And this is where we're going. Because you see, there was more than just what he had lost. There was more there. It was called booty. It was called surplus. It was called something you don't have that you can only have if God gives it to you. And so he had this. So he goes. He has 600 men. Two were kind of tired. You get people that are tired. Something. I'm tired of fighting already. So they stayed back at the brook of Bessar. 200 remained back at the brook of Bessar as they were faint, as I would said they felt. And 400 men went with David and they overtook them. They res uh, God, God responded by blessing them and helping them. And so they overtook everything. They beat them. They got everything they needed. They recovered their wives, their children, their livestock, and what the enemy possessed. Now you say, I know that story. You do. But you got to see this as surplus. This is exceeding. Requirements were met. Demands were established. Verse 19 says that there was nothing lacking them. Neither the spoil itself. The surplus. Verse 20. It said that the wicked men did not want to share the surplus. Well, you didn't get that. See, the church today is falling into that area. They can have what they earned. They can have what they lost. They can have their wives, their children, and their money back. But they're not going to have what we fought for an increase. But David, he was a funny kind of a character. So he said, no, 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 no. God won us this battle. So we're going to share equally among everybody. In fact, I'm going to give the king, the heathen guy, I'm going to give him some too. I'm going to give everybody that allowed us to hunt. If you read down, hunt in their land. I'm going to give them all blessings. I'm going to distribute the surplus throughout everybody. Saved and unsaved. So they might know that God is good and He is powerful. And He's the one that has this to give. So you might say, I don't agree with that. Well, that's the word. That's 1 Samuel 30. That surplus, that sharing. Let me take a little break to share how we're here. We're here by God's anointing, but by tithers and offering givers. Just to be clear. And we stand firm. There are some that come. 
it's a nice place to refresh yourself right it is you go through many churches like that it's a water hole get refreshed it's hot out there in the desert it's hard when you're moving forward and to some it's an oasis right put up tents stay for whatever time God has for you and then there's forest dwellers that's me and a few others which means we stay put until God tells us different we stay established grounded where we're planted I can only prosper where I'm planted not where I transplant myself so I can't go open a church someplace else if God's not telling me to do that if he tells me to by all means of course yes and, and this one will function because it has more than a function power it has the anointing to do that and has the leaders and the capabilities way beyond my understanding but you see I can only prosper I know and believe that where I'm planted so it's tithers and offering givers you see God gave the vision but we have to do the work God gives us the brushes but we got to scrub the building right right don't get mad if you're not in that category change see take all that energy and change instead of getting mad at me for what you're not doing why don't you do what God wants you to do so you can become part of what God is doing to help others don't get mad I don't get mad we share what we get here we do our very best to hear God and obey in every area David said to the Lord the, uh, David said that the Lord had given us his surplus the spoil was given to us David said I'm going to share with everybody in the land that helped us to do what we had to do and we were going through hard times when you're going through the pandemic when you're going through the shutdown don't forget those that helped you don't forget those that saw you through don't forget those that were with you oh you're not hearing me yeah. whatever and whoever helped David David said I divided the surplus with them because they allowed us to hunt in their land in those days that's how they had surplus we all know this scripture. Let me break it down a little bit today before we come to a close. John 10.10. 10. You know, you, you got all kinds of codes. You got 10.4. Read you 5 by 5. You know, all kinds of codes, right? This is, this is John 10.10 10 today. Roger that. 10.10. 10. And what is 10.10? 10? Well, there's a thief out there that's coming to steal, kill, and destroy 24-7. That's what he do. That's his job. But Jesus said, and this translation says it this way. Jesus said, I came to give and give and then in abundance of surplus abundantly given into the fullness of your life i'm like oh i like that i got a few claps it's lopsided but that's okay i'm not looking for applause i just believe god has something for us proverbs 3 9 and 10 amplified bible we know this also honor the lord with your wealth and from the first fruit or it says substance in certain areas and the first fruits of all your crops. It has a print, little parenthesis that says income. This is amplified. Then your barns, that's why I was looking for a barn. Then your barns will be abundantly filled. And your vats, your holdings, of the, that's what they hold in the grain and different things like that, will overflow with full surplus and with new wine. I'm not asking you to go drink now. Take it easy, okay? We'll, we'll go get some wine. Oh, good, good. We have to go here and get some wine afterwards. No, I'm not saying that. I'm talking about surplus. In closing, I want to share the Amplified Bible in Galatians 6 7. Um, our worship leader shared 6 9 this morning in Galatians, I believe it was. Um, and we know this scripture, but I'm going to close with it very calmly because I want you to hear what God says. This is how we grow to have what we need to help others. God will not be ridiculed or treated with contempt or allow his precepts to be set aside. For whatever a man sows, listen to how it says it in this, this and only this, what he will reap. That's pretty heavy. You might say, oh, it's a real quiet in here. It's a negative word. No, it's a powerful word. I live by that word. My pastor, my first pastor shared it my home at a table when I didn't understand much about too much but he said you've got to understand God only give you what you sow if you're not a sower you can't reap it everything whether it's clothes shoes believe me shoes 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 clothes 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 I remember when I only had a couple of pair of jeans and my shoes had holes in them and a few shirts not much about I'd wear what I had to go to church and I was with the I remember one day my pastor, I think he was laughing, but he wanted to compliment me because he couldn't believe I did that. I wore jeans and a lower shirt and a tie. <laughs> That's like really, I know, right? <laughs> now I think about it, I go, did I really do that? Because <laughs> he looked at me and goes, brother. <laughs> but 
it's probably saying, are you going golfing with some people or something? You know, because you know how they wear weird stuff. Anyways, but it's because I had a tie. It's because it was a nice Aloha shirt. And I wanted to dress up the best I could for God. Huh? It was a solid color. Thank you. It was a solid color. I wasn't totally off. But I've never seen too many people with Aloha shirt wear ties. So but my pastor went, thank you for encouraging me today. I'm like, oh, okay, you're welcome. Because <laughs> you know, I was just happy to please the Lord. I wanted to do it because that's the best I had to offer. That's, that's what I, I, I'm saying that for. Although it seemed a little crazy and ridiculous. And so this is the word today. This is the start of a season that I have no idea or concept of how long it'll go. But I can tell you, it's not going to last overnight or a month or a year. I got a real good feeling inside my heart and my spirit and soul. It's going to be a, the longest season we've ever seen. Because of what God's about to do that He hasn't done yet. So that's for all of us. That's for you watching. And just, uh, you know, tap in and just get closer to God. That's the message. Just get closer to God. That's what I'm sharing and asking you to do. Just get closer to God. That's the main thing. Your relationship with God is really all that matters. From there, He will tell you what to do. He'll direct you to what to do. That's how I got where I'm at. I just followed instructions. And He does this for all of us because He loves all of us equally. He forgives all of us equally as we ask and repent. But I got news for you. He wants us to be able to receive an anointing that grows and grows and expands. The closer we get, the better it is. Enoch got so close, he got taken. Hello? And the Bible says he displeases him. I got all these testimonies about all the things God delivered me from, and he was just a nice guy. I'm like, oh, I got all these testimonies. And it says in Hebrews, it says that Enoch was no more, and God took him because he pleased him. I said, wow, I can please you. I'm going to please you. I believe that's a key for the rapture. I'm just saying for me to you. I believe if you please God, you got a one-way ticket with a ticket to return later on, but one way for right now. We don't want to be left behind. So let's enjoy this season. Let's ask God. Get closer to Him. If you don't want to, it's okay. I love you anyway. But you can stay over there. I'm going to be somewhere else. I'm going to be in the place of abundance and surplus. I'm going to be in a place of benefits. You can stay in blessings or you can move into benefits can stay in blessings blessings are good oh benefits oh i like benefits benefits are great bless, bless i like blessings oh that's a wonderful meal but oh boy you supply one year of meals oh wow, that's a really big benefit i don't mind getting crazy for jesus i don't care if people laugh at me i go home i sleep good that means i take a nap if i can't take a nap then i've done something wrong and if i do something wrong then i just say hey, lord help me out here show me what i did that i shouldn't have done i love all of you God wants you to know it's for all of us. All of us. I wouldn't want to yell it. I'm just going to say it's for all of us. It's not just for one or two or three or ten or a hundred individuals. I don't think it could be me because I'm not doing everything right. Then change. Don't be the donkey. God uses them to talk too, but only to stubborn prophets. Just say. Don't be the donkey. It's an encouraging word that God can use anybody. But if you need your dog to come talk to you or a fish or a plant, I don't know, your plant might go, get through it. <laughs> you think I'm joking, huh? God can do anything. There's no restrictions on him. But he'd rather you just listen to him, hear him from your heart, and receive. Father, we thank you today. We thank you for your word. Thank you for a time of surplus, a season so abundant that it's only been seen thousands of years before that you're preparing us. You're getting us ready. And that all we have to do is follow you. Get closer to you. Hear you. Father, we thank you. We bless you this wonderful morning. We thank you for one, two, three, four. We can't even count the miracles like the song said. And we can go back and just honor you and reverence you for all that you have done. And keeping you, Father, at our heart powered. Powered the heart. Keeping you in our heart, Lord. So we thank you today. We bless you, Holy Spirit. Give us the path to follow this word. We lift you up, Holy Spirit, inside of us. Rise up big. And give us the path that we might walk in those steps to receive the surplus of a lifetime. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you this morning. Receiving Christ is the most important part. Being born again, as they say in John chapter 3. Being born again, receiving Christ into your heart, being renewed and refreshed.
fresh. So if I'm speaking to anyone in here, just raise your hand. If it's anyone out there, raise your hand. Even if I can't see you, God can. And just to pray, just calmly with you. And just say, Lord Jesus, forgive me my sins. Come into my heart and be the Lord of my life. Thank you, Father, for sending your son to die for me. I know he is seated at your right hand by resurrection power, which I now possess. I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You prayed that prayer, give us a call. Let us know. We send you a Bible. We'll direct you to a church if you're on another island. Come join us if you're in this district, if you're in this area, you don't have a place to fellowship. Every church is created by God so that people can fit perfectly like a, like a garment. Pastor and I were talking. Uh, when one of their brothers were um, sworn in, I remember the gentleman, I believe it was the captain that was speaking, that was saying, it's like a jacket when we were there in uh, Pearl Harbor. Yeah? And, they were, you know, they, these, these are being sworn in to the um, army. And he said, it's like a jacket. You put it on and, and see how it fits, you know? So I'm not taking or making little of it, but it's like that. It's like a tight fit. And God has a place for all of us to worship, all of us to be. We just want to be there where He wants us to be. Amen? God is good. So if that's you, give us a call. Give us an email, a prayer request. We can pray for you and come in agreement. Believe me, those texts go out because my phone rings out at times. <laughs> like so many of us have on those threads that just give all the prayers that are needed. And they go out and we're praying for you. We just believe God for you. If God touched you today, let us know. Surplus is for you too. Every one of you. If God touches you to give a seed, this is a powerful ground. Not because of me, but because what God had done with our 22 outreaches, a mission value of purpose. You go to the website, wordoftruthmaui.org, green button on the top, secure line that takes you there, and go ahead and see. If you have a church, tide your church. Don't send us your tithes. Send us the things that you want in an offering to receive the abundance from this house and this part. Amen? Love all of you. God bless you. Bye now. Hallelujah.